real insight that you have had that you expound in your book so clearly and uh, that you've said here that has been a surprise to a lot of people because they perhaps just haven't thought of this dimension when it comes to it, uh, is the continuity between heaven and this earth. Mm. Uh, you take seriously mm. Peter's comment that we will be living in a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Uh, say just a little bit more about that idea mm. of the continuity between heaven and earth and, uh, and just to take it a little bit further, many people I think think of heaven as just up there, a purely spiritual place, and that's when you kind of get lost into the far side image of the cartoon sitting there wishing you'd brought a magazine. Uh, uh, but tell us just a little bit more and what led you to that insight, which I think is a very real biblical insight. Hmm. Well, you mentioned uh, Second Peter 3. Now, here's a passage that we often refer to uh, about the destruction of the current world. But that's just part of the picture. And we need to go on. Because it does say in verse 10 of 2 Peter 3, and, and turn there, if you've got your Bibles with you, and I hope when you come to the cove, you do have your Bibles with you. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. You don't know when. And what's going to happen? The heavens will disappear with a roar. Well, what's the heavens? In the Bible, there's the, the um, first heaven, the second heaven, the third heaven. The first heaven is the atmosphere. The second heaven is the, the stars, you know, what we would think of as, as outer space, the celestial heaven. The third heaven is the special dwelling place of God, and it's a synonym for paradise, uh, Paul refers in 2 Corinthians 12 to the third heaven, paradise. Uh, but the heavens, that is the physical heavens, the atmosphere and then beyond that, outer space, will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything in it will be, and some translations say, destroyed. Other translations I happen to have the NIV here say will be laid bare. And the earliest manuscripts are not destroyed, but laid bare. Now, there is a destruction going on, but what is the laid bare? Well, they're going to be stripped of everything that was associated with the fall, with the curse. See, everything was to be put under righteous man and woman, and they were to rule the earth which was really the centerpiece of the universe. Not, not the physical centerpiece of it, of course. It's, it's revolving uh, around the sun, obviously, and the sun is part of a, a galaxy, and the galaxy is part of many, many other uh, galaxies in a local group, and then uh, a virtually infinite number of galaxies that have been discovered uh, since then, and, and, and they're out there. But the earth was the center because that's where God's plan was being carried out in his image bearers. And so God creates them to rule the earth to his glory. And because of the fall and because of the curse, it's all going to end in death. Okay, that's, that's bad, obviously. That's bad news. And we're told that everything will indeed be destroyed in this way. Since it will be, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. So you go, okay, that's it. The end of everything, the end of the material universe, there will never be one again. Wrong. Read the next verse. Verse 13, which is the culminating verse. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Now, see, what we're looking forward to 
is not simply that the earth will be destroyed. It's that the earth will be refashioned. And the Bible is full of re-words. You know, resurrect, resurrect. Reconcile, reconcile. Restore, renew, regeneration. These re-words are words of bringing back what once was and was good. God made the world. What did he say? Good, good, good. And then on the end of the sixth day, very good. He approved of it. And God says he's going to bring that back into being. Some people say, but wait a minute, I don't get that. Because if there's going to be destroyed, how is it going to be recreated or refashioned or resurrected? In exactly the same way as our bodies. Do we have any trouble understanding that? I mean, we don't know the mechanics of it, but we know that we live, we die. When we die, our bodies go to the grave. They decompose. If somebody died 2,000 years ago, there's nothing left. They're part of the ecosystem, okay? And then comes the resurrection, and what is God going to do? He's going to raise those bodies. And they found these ancient Egyptians, you know, and the, the mummies and all that, and they found DNA, and, of course, God doesn't have to use DNA, but the point is that it's actually there. He could reconstitute the DNA, and, and, and that could be part of his means of resurrection. He doesn't need a means. He can just snap his fingers and do whatever he wants. But the point is that those bodies which were destroyed are going to be recreated and resurrected and forever be in an actual physical form like Christ's resurrection body in that same way, the earth will be destroyed, but then the earth will be recreated and renewed for eternity. So I